Healthcare workers ang mga itinuturing mga bagong bayani ngayong may pandemya. Kamakailan lang din idineklara ng ating gobyerno na ang taong 2020 ay ang taon ng mga Filipino health workers. Nire-recognize nito ang tapang at sakripisyo na binibigay ng ating mga doktor, nurse, medical technicians, support staff, at ang iba pa na bumubuo sa ating health system. Kung wala sila, walang mag-aalaga sa isang daang milyong Pilipino sa ating bansa. Kung kulang sila, mas magiging mabigat ang dalahin ng iilang bahagi ng ating healthcare system. Kung limitado lang ang sakop nila, hindi natin nasaserbisyohan ang mga taong nangangailangan ng sapat at tamang alaga na dapat nilang matanggap upang gumaling o hindi magkasakit. Kaya, nasaan nga ba ang ating mga health workers ngayon? Kasama natin si Doc Nem Fahutagana ng National Teacher Training Center for the Health Professions sa UP Manila para malaman kung kamusta nga ba ang estado ng ating healthcare workforce. Well, ang health workforce natin ay biased towards the urban centers. Kita natin to sa high health workforce to patient ratio in the urban and relatively low in the rural areas. This ratio further deteriorates when we talk about specialty level care. Kasama din natin si Doc Harry Hamoy ng UP Manila Community Health Development Program, isang propesor sa community health. Our health system is overwhelmed. Malala ang effect ng COVID-19 sa vulnerable pero sa pagkalahatan na rin. Ang isang specific example, uh, persons deprived of liberty o ang tinatawag na PDLs, sila ang mga nasa prison facilities na may limited access to healthcare. Yung system natin does not allow them to freely consult specific specialist physicians who are obviously outside these facilities for specific uh, ailments. Tapos ang mga doctor who work in these facilities are really few in number. So with overcrowded facilities and a very low physician to PDL ratio, it is really hard to have that quality and appropriate health care. Dahil ganito na ang ganap sa normal nating buhay, mas lumalala ito habang panahon ng pandemya. Kapag tumataas ang dami ng mga malalang kaso, kinakailangan nila ng sapat na workforce na mag-aalaga at tutulungan silang gumaling. Hindi lamang ang ating sistema ang naaapektuhan, ngunit pati na rin ang moral at well-being ng ating mga healthcare workers. Dito, malaki ang potensyal ng telehealth. Nakakatuwa na ginagamit natin ng term na telehealth. Telemedicine has become the buzzword in e-health. Naisip ng mga tao, madalas, ay online consultation when, when in fact we know that it is more than that. Kapag i-mention mo ang telehealth, I think ang agad na naisip ng mga tao ay ang mga remote consults o kung anong tinatawag natin na telemedicine. Ang World Health Organization or WHO, it defines telehealth as the delivery of health services where patients and providers of services are separated by distance. Gamit ng telehealth, maaari nating increase ang access sa cost-effective quality healthcare kahit saan man ang patient, increase ang access sa medical information na maaaring makatulong sa patients, families, and even communities when coping with medical issues and emergencies. Telehealth transcends geographic barriers for quality health services, persistent cultural and traditional practices, lalo na para sa mga geographically and disadvantaged areas tulad ng mga nasa remote island or mountain communities at vulnerable groups sa prison facilities, yung mga PAWDs natin, yung poor at unemployed and indigenous population. Telehealth emphasizes the comprehensiveness of services and programs that we can deliver to stakeholders. With telehealth, we will be able to make sure that we are making available all levels of care by all types of health professionals to all types of people. Ang laki ng potensyal ng telehealth. Pero, paano kaya ito nakakatulong ngayong panahon ng pandemya? But with telehealth, 
through the practice of telemedicine, magiging possible to access quality healthcare through teleconsultations, where they can remotely consult with doctors who are otherwise maybe not comfortable or have no time to visit these facilities. In various ways, the COVID-19 pandemic has turned the once underrated practice of telehealth into a widely explored alternative mode of practice. It is riding on the way of the new normal in health service delivery. Nag-partner na rin ang Department of Health at ang ilang organizations ng private sector para magamit para magumamit ng ano ng telehealth sa pag-provide ng consults at timely information para sa lahat. Ang galing! Pero bakit hindi pa ito ginamit bago pa tayo magka-COVID-19 pandemic? Telemedicine would have been one of the most important strategies in this time of COVID-19 pandemic. Ang concern ko lang, I am not sure if we and those who need it the most have maximized its use or have even reached them. I know hundreds or even thousands of health professionals would have wanted to provide telehealth. Unfortunately, connectivity is still a major hindrance lalo na para sa mga nasa communities. Being involved in health professions, education, and training for almost three decades, I know that telehealth-related competencies have not been addressed fully by our curricular programs. Telehealth ay nanati- nanatiling bago. Hindi pa malawak ang pagtuturo nito sa classroom. It needs to be recognized and incorporated in the curriculum of health-related courses, especially in medical colleges. There needs to be a genuine appreciation of these platforms. Hindi lang uh, napilitan dahil sa COVID-19 value in providing quality health care effectively and efficiently. No? Hmm, kaya pala. Malaking konsiderasyon din ang kaalaman ng ating mga healthcare workers. Paano kaya natin ma-ensure na tama ang kanilang paggamit ng telehealth? Si Attorney Ivy Patdu, na isa ring doktor, ay isang eksperto sa data privacy at dating Deputy Commissioner ng National Privacy Commission. Sa ngayon, ang mga profesional na tulad ng doktor at nurse at iba pa ay sakop na ng maraming regulasyon tulad ng mga galing sa PRC importanteng magtulungan ang iba't ibang sektor para makagawa ng clinical standards, uh, practice standards, clinical guidelines. Importanteng maihanda din ng lahat sa paggamit ng angkop na teknolohiya. Maganda nga na makakasama ang telehealth sa mga curriculum ng mga health professionals habang nag-aaral pa lang sila at sunod sa mga professional development programs. Siyempre, mananatiling importante ang privacy ng mga pasyente at pati ng health workers. Kaya importante na bahagi ng anumang programa ang mga pulisiya at security measures para mapangalagaan ng personal na impormasyon. Sa tingin ko, mas nararapat na ang anumang regulasyon patungkol sa telehealth ay tumutok sa kung paano mapapatatag ang sistema, kung paano mapaghuhusay, matuturuan at maihahanda ang mga profesional at iba pang health workers sa pagbibigay ng serbisyong telehealth. Dapat nakadirekta din ang regulasyon sa kung paano mahihimok ang mas malawakang partisipasyon ng health workforce at pati ng mga tao. Uh, dapat may siguro rin ang financial coverage tulad ng PhilHealth para siguradong hindi maging mabigat sa pasyente at makabenepisyo sa workforce. Uh, dapat din, huwag kalimutan na matiyak ang suporta sa professional development, research at quality assurance. Ano ang pwede nating gawin? Pero paano mangyayari ito? Uh, we need champions talaga no? uh, to push relevant policies and laws to enable this transformation. This will also involve not only strengthening the manpower but also creating an enabling environment for these health workers no, to thrive on. This will also be coming from telehealth policies and laws, no, which is, of course, very important. So, in short, kailangan natin ng whole systems approach. No, this will make sure all aspects that will enable the use of and practice of telemedicine in the most effective way are being addressed. Ang telehealth hindi lang bago sa patients, pero bago rin ito sa mga health providers. Kaya importante ang mag-educate. Hindi lang sa mga tao, pero pati those involved 
in policy making. Ang telehealth pwedeng maging powerful platform for health promotion at isang prevention strategy. Habang sinisiguro naman natin na ang mga medical consults ay available at accessible sa ating lahat. Dapat may managing of expectations and there should be a recognition that telehealth or the practice of telemedicine if done properly is a good is as good as doing face-to-face -face consultations in some aspects. There are studies to support this claim, no? So if done properly, mas okay dapat ito sa patients and by extension sa LGU. Uh, LGU natin, dapat cognizant din na uh, like other systems, hindi ito one-size-fits-all initiative o one-time big-time project. Kailangan natin i-redefine ang ating konsepto ng maximum and optimal use of resources. Ito yung paraan kung paano natin tunay na ma-maximize ang telehealth given that it has to compete with other services and also given limited resources. We need to understand that telehealth expands beyond individual services. Telehealth can be portal for community and family consultation. Telehealth is beyond medical care. Telehealth can be maximized for health promotion and this is prevention. Kung telehealth ay may implement sa pinaka-ideal na paraan, it would have a big impact on continuity of care. I started my professional practice as a community physician. And honestly, after a patient is referred to a secondary or tertiary level healthcare facility, we would not hear from them anymore. With telehealth, mas nakakarinig na kami of more success stories in the area of continuity of care. Ang quality telehealth, beyond technology and connectivity, is about sa ating mga health workers na equipped with all the necessary KSA for telemedicine. Bawas sa oras habang traffic, bawas oras na nakapila sa clinic, at kaya na niyang mag-teleconsult sa isang specialist kahit ito pa ay nasa ibang isla o ibang city. Diba? So who does not like that? Thank you for joining us. We will continue this conversation next Thursday with all of you on Crowdcast, Facebook, and YouTube. Please like and subscribe. Our Facebook page is fb.com slash telehealthpolicy and our YouTube channel is at bit.ly slash telehealthpolicyyt. See you online!